All right, we're back to politics now. I'm joined here live in the studio by the Urban Infrastructure Minister, Paul Fletcher. Thanks for your company. Good to be with you. All right, let's get to your portfolio first and then we can broaden out from there. You've been on a recent trip, fact-finding mission to the US, is that right? Including taking a look at the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. Lessons for Australia with the new airport in Western Sydney, what are they? Look, Dallas-Fort Worth is an extraordinary airport. It's about 18,000 acres of land. One of the reasons it's very interesting in terms of Western Sydney Airport and the lessons we might learn is that it was established uh, in 1974 and at that time there was already an airport uh, love field serving Dallas and indeed, indeed that airport continues to operate quite strongly. With but very much as the second one now. It is now. Uh, of course we're now 40 years on uh, and so some of the lessons are really the the capacity that an airport can have to drive economic development. So, so tell us about that. So presumably I don't know that area at all. Presumably the the so North city Texas has built itself around the airport? Uh, Dallas and Fort Worth uh, are two cities. The combined area of what they now, a population of what they now call the Metroplex right. uh, is uh, approaching 7 million. Uh, in the 60s it was about 2 million. So there's been very strong growth in North Texas and Dallas Fort Worth Airport has been a really significant contributor. So buy up in Sydney's west in terms of housing, is that your message? Well it really goes to one of the things that both the Turnbull government and the uh, Berejiklian government in New South Wales want to do is not only deliver a successful and effective airport which meets the transport yeah. needs of people in Western Sydney and indeed Sydney, but also leverage the uh, jobs creating and economic potential of, uh, of Western Sydney Airport. And indeed we're working on the uh, Western Sydney City deal which will be between, centred around the airport, but between the New South Wales and Commonwealth governments and local councils. And that'll be looking at uh, issues like what sort of businesses do we want to attract? What are some of the land use planning issues? And so the Greater Sydney Commission is taking the lead on but that. But what if you're someone that bought out there or lives out there and you, know, you did it because you quite like being in an outer metropolitan area? You like the larger blocks, the quieter streets? I mean, that's all going to change. Well, it's worth making the point that development around Western Sydney Airport has been very heavily restricted since the 1980s when the land was acquired, about 1,800 mm. hectares. So, in fact, it's been a pretty good uh, piece of public policy uh, and good, good, good planning in many ways. And now we're at the stage where we've committed to the airport. So, of course, the Turnbull government has committed we'll proceed with Western Sydney Airport in the budget. We announced $5.3 billion. Uh, that will be an equity injection into a company, a government-owned company, that will uh, own and build the airport and of course when, when, when will it be operational 2026 2026 and so uh, what we've committed is that uh, early works initial works on the site will commence by the end of next year um, and so to achieve that a, f um, a first uh, package of early works needs to go out to market by the end of this year so there's a lot to get done uh, but also as I say that work between the Turnbull government and the Berejiklian government on the Western Sydney mm. City deal to look at the land use around it and the kind of businesses that are attracted. Uh, I, I, I want to get to some other yeah, issues before sure. we run out of time. So let, let's, let's get to the, something else from your trip mm. before we get to domestic issues. Uh, what might be in it for Australian business in the Trump era look, in the United States? Now, the Trump era is often satirised, mm. but the guy does want to seem to go on an infrastructure splurge. There's a strong commitment from the Trump administration to infrastructure. And of course, anybody who's travelled in the US would know that while their interstate highway system built in the 1950s was world leading at the time. Not anymore. Uh, it hasn't been well maintained and a lot of the public infrastructure in the US needs to be refreshed and updated. So there is a lot of interest actually in what we've been doing in Australia in infrastructure. Joe Hockey as ambassador has been doing a terrific job. What about helping out with the wall? Well, the focus has been on uh, uh, freeways, rail, also um, uh, uh, water and other kinds of infrastructure. Well, what about you the know, wall? Australians might help build the wall. Well, if I turn from uh, the Texas to New York, there were uh, a lot of there's a lot of Australian businesses there. So, uh, infrastructure financiers, a lot of businesses uh, who are represented in the US and looking at these business opportunities. We have built up in Australia quite a degree of expertise uh, in infrastructure financing and funding. Obviously the scale of our superannuation sector means there's a lot of capable uh, investment capacity here. And so uh, there is a lot of interest in the US and I was very struck in both Washington DC and in mm. New York by the amount of interest from uh, major US uh, institutions, politicians and others 
in the, the Australian infrastructure model, uh, what, what the coalition did at the federal level since coming in in 2013, what the uh, New South Wales government has done, and of course the role of uh, investors, particularly superannuation funds here and, uh, and pension funds in the US. But you didn't look at all into the wall that, that we might be able to play a role in that? I mean, that's going to be a huge project if he actually does it. My focus was on transport infrastructure, yeah, Peter, and, uh, and you know, there's a lot of Australians, businesses, uh, like Hastings, like Macquarie, like IFM, who have significant, uh, like trans Transurban, who have significant experience and a global presence mm. and a presence in the US. All right, let's talk about the front page splash in the Australian newspaper. Economy on the rise, the Treasurer Scott Morrison says, but he is warning as part of this speech that uh, we, we got an advanced copy of uh, that he's delivering today. He's warning you know, that you don't want to cut too hard and risk the recovery that's happening. Is that just translation for an excuse not to cut too hard? Well, uh, what Scott is obviously doing in this speech is laying out some of the uh, broader economic strategy uh, that the Turnbull government is following, and indeed uh, a key element of that was the, the budget strategy. Yeah, but so it sounds like he's justifying not returning to surplus as quickly as was originally committed to. Well, there, there is obviously a clear path back to surplus by 2020 21 in the budget, but of course when it comes to uh, macroeconomic policy, what you're wanting to do is maintain economic growth. Economic growth is the way to uh, maintain jobs growth and indeed uh, and in turn maintain prosperity. So it's very important that you have that balance. At the same time, we need to get the, uh, the budget back to balance. Uh, that's important as well. So that's the, the surplus has been pushed out, not just by you guys, but by Labor before that as well, obviously. But, you know, you're saying 2021 is the pathway back to surplus. The Badgerys Creek Airport is due to be built by 2026. You're confident that the surplus will arrive before Badgerys Creek? Well, you've seen what's in the budget. I mean, it's a, it's a commitment. <laughs> but if you're a Betty man, you, 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 you know, you... you... I, I have confidence in the budget that the Turnbull government and Treasurer Scott Morrison delivered. And as Scott is explaining today in this uh, major speech uh, in Melbourne, um, this is uh, part of the economic judgment calls that governments are required to make to deliver the economic security, the jobs that uh, Australians uh, expect their governments uh, and their economy to deliver. Either of your parents have foreign passports? No. Eligible for foreign well, let, Sorry, let me, let, me, let me rephrase that. <laughs> My parents were born in the UK came to Australia in 1967, uh, accompanied by me, and uh, my, my uh, father is no longer with us, but my mother has a British passport, so, uh, but I have renounced my British citizenship. And you've got evidence to that? I mean, I, not with you now. I do have evidence. you have, the, you have the evidence that others don't seem to have. You... I, and look, the rules are clear. Um, the, the constitutional provision has been interpreted by the High Court. What the High Court has said is, uh, Does it shock you that these guys, whether it's Greens or potentially others, we'll find out, uh, that they haven't done their due diligence on this before getting to Parliament? There's not a lot of ambiguity in the Constitution. Well, the, the, the terms of the provision have been interpreted by the High Court. Sure. What the High Court has said is the requirement is that you must have taken reasonable steps to renounce any non-Australian citizenship that you hold um, uh, to be a candidate or as you, as you go into Parliament. Um, and so that is the standard advice that is given to candidates in the Liberal Party and certainly when I was uh, pre-selected uh, I was uh, very strongly advised to get onto it on the Monday after I was pre-selected and I certainly did that and that's yep. standard practice uh, as I understand it in other major parties. Look, these are the rules and um, um, that's what you've got to do. Yep. Okay, before we run out of time mm. I want to ask you about Kevin Rudd. Mm. He's returned to politics, I'm sure Labor welcomes it. Uh, he's saying that uh, you guys should have settled these refugees in Australia. But Peter, the key thing is he told the Australian people and indeed he told uh, people smugglers that uh, in 2013 his claim was I'll uh, never get here. you'll never get here. Now he says in a piece of you know complete revisionism. Why do you he, think he says it? Why has he changed on that? Well because you can't trust Labor on border protection. Or is it just because he's strutting the world stage now and he wants to be Mr sort of uh, human rights and, and he doesn't care about the implication on that in the I am local politics. I'm really not interested in analysing the rich a psychological mystery that is Kevin Rudd. But what it does remind us is you cannot trust Labor on border protection. And let's just remember this is not just a political talking point. Uh, thousands of people died on, the, on their watch uh, from um, 2007 to 2013. Uh, and here's the man who had responsibility for it, lost control of the borders, then all of a sudden he was tough on borders. Uh, he's, he might as well have just come out and said it was a, a short-term election stunt. Uh, now the fact is, 
The people smugglers know that we are dead serious and the result that uh, Scott Morrison and Peter Dutton, as two highly capable ministers, has, have been able to deliver is mm. that we haven't had a people smuggling venture. And that is very important and it also has... Are the you pivot. worried though that Peter Dutton's attention on that will wane a little bit when he gets all these other responsibilities Look, in his super Peter's been a very effective minister. There will of course be two other ministers in the portfolio. Uh, they will all work together effectively. Um, you know, this is an area where the uh, Turnbull government, uh, before that the Abbott government, had a very clear, consistent policy that was in the national interest and that has also of course allowed us to mm. provide additional places for people, uh, refugees from Syria and other places. Uh, it's enabled us to maintain strong public confidence in immigration. We have a clear, consistent record of delivery on border protection. Uh, Labor cannot be trusted on border protection and Kevin Rudd has just come out this morning to remind Australians of that fact. Paul Fletcher, always appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us.